This is Map Musings. In this episode, we're going to check out the rise of the Panama Canal, explore the past with one of New Jersey's largest cities, check out where all the dangerous animals live in the world, and examine one of the most bizarre geographic features in the world. Local maps, regional maps, international maps, nonsensical maps. You're tuned into Map Musings. I'm the Muser, and these are the maps. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thank you. The clock is ticking. Let's see which map we have first here. Oh, okay. A time zone map. This map is showing us the amount of time zones per country. Of course, the gray means that that entire country has just one time zone. The blue is two time zones, all the way up to 13 time zones in red. In the darker orange, the United States has 11 time zones, as does Russia. What I find interesting is that other large countries, such as India or China, only use one time zone. So it could be pitch black dark in western China, but because it's only 6pm in Beijing, that's the time it is throughout the whole country. Kazakhstan and Mongolia are very wide countries, yet somehow only have two time zones. Deceivingly, France has 13 time zones, but that's including all of its different territories and dependencies around the world, such as French Guiana in South America. Same with the UK, it shows that it has nine time zones, but that's actually including all of its territories around the world. So if you didn't include those, the UK would only have one time zone. That also explains how tiny little Denmark has five different time zones. It's because they got territories all over the place. Same with the USA and Russia, this map includes its territories beyond its main borders. I wish this map didn't do that, but that's how they did it. Still an interesting map. The Panama Canal was finished in 1914, so this map is from 1911 as it was being built, but a lot of the main portions of it have already been cut and dug into the earth. So, we're looking at a map of the Panama Canal. The top portion shows us the different elevations that the canal goes through, while the lower portion shows us a aerial map as it splits the country in two. So it comes in at the east end by the city of Panama, works its way through the country, and pops out at Cologne. At both ends of the map, you can see proposed fortifications as well, sort of as breakwaters. I think it goes without saying that the Panama Canal is one of the greatest achievements of human history, especially on the transportation side, as it was able to cut transit times in major ways. No longer did ships have to go around South America to get to the Atlantic or Pacific. Instead, they could just cut right through Central America. Next, we have one of the most impressive canyons in the world, a topographical map of the Grand Canyon. But what makes this map so interesting? Well, <laughs> it's a 1967 map from Poland. It was distributed through the Pergamon Press of the UK for Polish students. This map shows us data collected from 2021 to 2022 and shows us the biggest sources of electricity by country in Europe. At the very bottom it shows that Europe as a whole gets the majority of its power from nuclear followed by natural gas, coal, hydroelectric, wind, then solar. But if we decide to look at it a little different by country, we can do that as well. Countries such as Germany, Poland, Czechia, Turkey all get the majority of their power from coal, while other countries such as Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Portugal get the majority of their power from hydro. Wind power is mostly for Spain, Denmark, Lithuania. Nuclear power is for Finland, France, Hungary, Slovakia. And some of the major countries remaining on gas for the majority of their power are the Netherlands, the UK, Ireland. Italy and Greece. Only the small island nation of Cyprus gets the majority of its electricity from oil. For comparison, the majority of the United States' electricity comes from natural gas. An enlightening map. So what color do you think of when thinking of a wedding dress? Apparently that changes depending on where you are in the world. Much of the western influenced world uses the color white for wedding dresses. But where it gets interesting is in the Asian countries. Red is a popular color in western China as well as the Indian subcontinent. A mix of yellow, red, and gold are all popular in Southeast Asia. Indonesia has no really clear color of choice except 
do not use black, and Africa, for the most part, has no preference in color, except for the more Arab countries to the north, they tend to use red, and the western countries prefer to use black and dark purple. I can hear those wedding bells playing right now. This tells us the number of venomous animals by country, and it's true, everything in Australia does try to oof you. There's over 50 venomous animals in Australia, Indonesia, India, Brazil, and Mexico. It seems roughly the further you get away from the equator, the less likely your country has venomous animals trying to bite you. I think this map does a pretty cool job at showing us the geographical breakdown of Texas. It shows just how diverse this state actually is. A lot of people don't even realize Texas has forests to the east. A lot of people, when they think of Texas, they probably kind of associate it with western Texas being deserts and plains and just flat plateaus, but it's so much more than that. You even have the Gulf Coast, some savanna land, and even hill country. And uh, speaking about the Gulf Coast, if you want to know more about the Gulf Coast, I recommend this video series of ours, which goes along the entire Gulf Coast. Worth a watch. Today's panoramic map is this very skewed map of Newark, New Jersey in 1916. This map shows us Newark before its identity had kind of been lost to New York City, just becoming part of the metro area. We can see the downtown area clamored against the Passaic River with lots of industry along it. We also see this space between Newark and Jersey City, which today would be called the Meadowlands. And at this time, it wasn't all developed. Now it's all developed. It sort of just runs along as one big massive city. Further off in the distance, we can see the 1916 skyline of New York City. At the time of this map, the city was nearing its peak population and had a population of about 415,000 people. The city peaked in the 1950s at about 440,000 people before declining rapidly to about 300,000 today. Even back over a hundred years ago though, we can see the city had a web of streets and roads all around it connecting it to the lifeblood of New York City. It's just so weird seeing this region without it all being sprawled out. Elizabeth hasn't grown out as a city. There's no Newark Liberty International Airport between Newark here and the docks you can see in the distance. I mean, technically airports weren't even a thing yet. Nobody even thought about air travel. Heck, the massive South Kearney Yards it's a railroad depot hasn't even been constructed here yet. It's just so cool seeing a slice of time in these old panoramic maps. You've heard people say that big cities are more liberal than rural and suburban areas, and well, this map pretty much just provides the evidence right here. Business Insider pulled this data and set out this map in 2014, and it shows us on this list that San Francisco, California is the most liberal city in America at that time, followed by Washington, D.C., Seattle, Oakland, Boston, and according to their data, the most conservative large city was Mesa, Arizona, followed by Oklahoma City, Virginia Beach, and Colorado Springs, both Virginia Beach and Colorado Springs, of course, having larger military presence and who tend to have more traditional values and be conservative. If we look at the graph here as well, we can see the red line down the middle is straight down the road, middle. Conservatism is on the right, liberalism is on the left, and pretty much every city is to the left of that conservative line, though things have certainly changed a lot since when this graph was originally made. Here's just a cool map of forests around the world. Along the equator here you can see the thick jungles of Africa, Indonesia, and the Amazon rainforest in South America. And in the northern hemisphere we have the thick boreal forests of Russia and Canada. Within Hudson's Bay in Canada, we have this very strange geographic feature known as the Belcher Islands Archipelago. Looking at them on a map, you're probably wondering how the heck are they shaped this way? Geologically, they're mostly made up of Precambrian granite and were formed by glaciers. They're part of the larger, vast region known as the Canadian Shield, which was formed over X amount of years. Long story short, it was all glaciers. The glaciers retreated and scrubbed the land to be flat, and behind it left ancient rocks. And in the most basic terms, that is how we have the Belcher Islands Archipelago. It's just what's left behind from a glacier, and today it's mostly just flat land with very little vegetation and lots of little 
lakes and ponds. It's just a hunk of rock in the middle of some water. And believe it or not, the islands do have a permanent settlement on it, known as Sinicaluk, and it's a aboriginal town. Administratively, the islands are also part of the Kigiktaluk region of Nunavut, despite being closer to the coastline of Ontario or Quebec. Really just a wild piece of geography on this wonderful place we call Earth. And we'll end things off here showing us a heat map of all the shipping traffic in the world thanks to our friends at Marine Traffic who track shipping data. We can see some choke points here on this map that kind of tie in with what we were talking about earlier, such as the Panama Canal, the Suez Canal, as well as a ton of ships going around the southern horn of Africa. You can see some thick red lines between North America and Asia as ships traverse back and forth across the Pacific, as well as between North America and Europe. And we can also see some heavily trafficked river routes in the world, such as the Danube in Europe, or the Mississippi and Columbia River in the United States states and i think that's about all we have time for thanks for watching map musings i'm the muser and those were the maps be sure to like subscribe and comment below we also have a patreon which you can support in the future when we get patreon supporters they will be shown here thanks again for watching and have a great day Everything in Australia does try to oof you.